testing one two three hi everyone this is richard carlton here today is an awesome day because we're going to get to talk about filemaker filemaker is very cool so let's talk about the upcoming broadcast schedule There's some really important notes to note in here so one fm train.tv uh, I do have the JavaScript updated training. Um, we're going to start with a little bit of JavaScript tomorrow, but largely we have Leland Long setting up for a schedule for that. It's very exciting. Uh, tomorrow is about, well, some interesting stuff. So let's talk about the broadcast set. Today is script triggers, beginners for script triggers. The reason I'm doing this right now is because I realized that when we did the 30-day CRM, I did a poor job of talking about script triggers. It was kind of all over the place wandering. It's one of those moments where I look back at a video and it just wasn't good enough. And so we're redoing it today. So for those of you who are not like super ninja with script triggers, today's gonna be good for you. If you want basics on script triggers, we're gonna cover it uh, because I need to. Tomorrow, tomorrow is what we call, it's when, uh, our, does anyone here, okay, back up. What marketing people have done historically to me when we build database systems for them, they would come to me, the database is running slow, but because they're marketing people, they won't say that, they're just gonna jump to an end conclusion, which is the internet is full. I have heard that many, many times before from people. Um, so tomorrow's conversation about is the e -e internet is full. So we're gonna be discussing, uh, covering what latency is, what acceptable levels of latency are. We're gonna be talking about that, showing it. Also, Leland Long built a latency, who's our JavaScript guy, built the latency scanner checker thing, right? And so he's gonna be coming on the show to talk about that at great length. Um, and what's gonna end up happening with him is that, uh, is that we, will, we will discuss that, talk about it, but we're building his little checker into starting point. Now we're working on a new starting point, not for next week, but for the week after. Um, I hope it's the week after. Yeah, it's a week after. Um, and we're desperately trying to get it done because what we did is we got a starting point, found a bunch of bugs. So we're fixing a bunch of stuff. And it does have the one, not a lot of new features, but mostly just a cleanup. And we added this latency checker. So when someone goes, hey, the internet's full and you're in starting point, you go to the home, you go to the preferences, you hit the button. And it does this network test against Apple, Google, and Amazon, a couple people. You can set it up to do a network test if you have ping access to your FileMaker server. So if it comes back and says 15 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds or whatever it says, that's a diagnostic tool for you to help understand how the internet might be full. So this is what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. So that is triaging FileMaker when people report the internet is full. All right, so today is on script triggers for beginners. So Mary, I'm counting on you to help me out. All right, so I need your questions on this as an interactive. So we're gonna start this at the beginning. So let's talk about a database, right? A, so I'm gonna start. Now, I've been training some new juniors at the company. And what sometimes throws them off is when I show them a shiny database. So if I show them this as an example of what FileMaker might look like. Okay, so this is the starting point 2020, 20, 20, 2022 light. When people see this, their brains explode because I want to talk about a minor part of this and all they see is this interface here and these things here and their heads are totally overwhelmed. So for a lot of the beginners out there, I've learned this, Taylor, you're one of those people. I simplify the conversation by opening up something blank. So we're going to start this. Here's a blank, very simple file right here that we were playing with the other day. It's got some basic fields right here. So let's talk about script triggers. So I'm counting on feedback. Margaret, help me with that. So script triggers, I have this, we're giving you this PDF. Margaret's gonna post this PDF for you. This is part of our curriculum. We took Claris's original curriculum that they abandoned years ago, like a homeless, so they had a child, they abandoned on the street. I rescued that, like a rescue cat. Meow, meow, meow. I have six rescue cats. We bring it in, it grows up, and then we have this thing here. So this is it. So script triggers, we've updated this. Um, essentially, the important things about understanding about FileMaker is that historically, and probably in some of your FileMaker files over here, I'm going to make this window a little smaller. Here's the deal with uh, FileMaker: is that historically you could you had a button, you could build a button, and the button could run a script. Okay, very basic stuff. You know, run script. Okay, that was a button. The button typically this one button here doesn't have an outline uh, because that's Claris's. Uh, kind of default theme and style, but if I said it had a solid color, the solid color was gray, and then you had an outline, it's ugly, but you get the idea. That was a button. 
The other way of running scripts was with a startup script. We call, used to be actually called them officially startup scripts. I still call it that because it's very descriptive as to what it does. It runs when you start up, okay? Um, there was also the close down script, which kind of mirrored the startup script. Those are all still there. What Claris did is that they, that every script that is a button or a button bar, we're not really talking about. It's the same scripts. You have these scripts under script workspace up here. If I go script workspace, of course, there's like one whole script in here, right? Uh, it's not even much of a script. The issue here is that you have all these scripts. So these scripts are all available for you to call either with a button or with a startup of the window or with a script trigger, okay? Script triggers were added, I don't know, seven, eight, 10 years ago probably closer to 10 years ago at this point, at least. Um, they continue to be updated. In fact, I think Claris, I saw some paperwork the other day, they're gonna do a new script trigger in the next version of whatever. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna tell you about it or anything about it because at the moment I forgot, but it was like, hey, they're going back and kind of revisiting some of this stuff. So I think there's a new trigger that's gonna come. Pretty cool, right? Claris continues to invest in the platform, very exciting. So. The idea is that with script triggers, if I come back over here, there's like 26 script triggers. Now understand that the script triggers can be a script. A script can be activated with a button. It could be activated on startup of a window or close down of the window. So Claris moved those startup and close down scripts under what they call a script trigger. So script triggers can be uh, attached. They have to be attached to something. So a script normally is attached to a button. Here's the button right here. A, a script can be attached to that. The script with with these additional triggers can be attached to a file. It can be attached to a layout, or it can be attached to an object on the layout. Now there are certain limitations and restrictions, but I think that you can find a valid use for almost everything you need to do, right? I can show you some examples. We're gonna talk about these. A script, once again, on a button, which is kind of an object, but it's kind of the old school. They don't really call that really a trigger. It's attached to the button. Uh, then you have attached to a file, attached to a layout, attached to an object. So let's cover those sequentially because they're they're simple, as simple like that, then they get kind of progressively more complicated. So here's my FileMaker file right here, very basic. The file can be local on my computer and can be hosted on a server. Triggers will activate kind of uniformly, very consistently between Go and Pro, okay? There are a little variations of a couple of triggers I think you get with Go that behave maybe slightly differently. They make sense, right? Like if you rotate the orientation, um, they don't call it rotate orientation. They call it, I think, something else. But the idea is window resize or something. Um, and on on, the, on a Mac or Windows computer, it's like, yeah, it's not so useful. But on a, on a device that you're rotating, ah, that could be really useful. Then on WebDirect, there are some script steps that are uh, supported there, and some are not. Some are really processor intensive, and web directs a browser. So there's limits to what it can do. That being said, loosely, I would say loosely, uh, script triggers will work pretty identically between Pro and Go. And then there will be some mostly compatible stuff with web direct. So mostly, right, so I would say 95% goodness back and forth between Mac, Windows, and iOS. And then maybe 70% goodness between the dedicated clients for FileMaker and WebDirect, which once again, we call it kind of a client, but really it's a, a web browser, right? So understand. So how do you est establish them for a file? You're gonna go to file, down to file options, bamo, bamo, and this comes up. This is where we set the uh, login, auto login for a test file, right? Uh, you have the icon, you have some other checkbox, some really actually important stuff in here I'm not gonna talk about. Come over here to script triggers. So on first window open is the startup script. On the last window close is the typical la uh, closing script. Those are the historical ones. So the first window open, and then the last window to close. Now, you can have a solution where it's already open and you spawn another window. That is what you would do right here. So this only spawns on the first window, right? This one over here is gonna spawn when you if you open additional windows. I had a customer call me one time. He goes, Carlton, FileMaker sucks. I'm like, okay, what's, what's the problem this time? And he's like, 
It turns out what he's done, he's got like two monitors on his computer. And every time a customer calls him on the phone, he pops open a new window and brings up that customer information. But his phone's ringing off the hook, so he never finishes what the customer needs. That customer hangs up. He's working on that customer. We trained him, well, don't lose where you're at. Just pop a new window. He has 50 FileMaker windows open at the same time. So this would cause a script to tr that tr trigger every time he popped a new window. So he'd get if he opened 50 windows, you get this script right here run 50 times. Right. And if I was smart, I would I would do a little check to say, oh, you've got 50 windows open, Doug. Please close some of these and don't blame FileMaker for your bad behavior. <laughs> that was a fun one. So that is the difference there. That's on a file. AV player change. I have never had a single customer ask me about this. I tell them, hey, they come up with a solution. Hey, I got this really great video playback thing that will only work on some iOS devices, right? And I'm like, okay, so you're going to build this function that only works on some iOS devices, right? And so I believe this one is attached to that, or maybe now it works on Macs and iOS devices, but originally it was iOS devices only, right? And that has to do with when you're playing a sound or a movie on the phone, on your iPad or something, and then you go to the home screen and it still keeps playing in the background. That I think it has to do with that, right? So they so, but once again, no one has ever paid me to build a project with that. What you're going to do with these, you're going to specify the script that you're going to call. You click here, and this bring all the scripts that are in the system. You can call these, okay? There's only one in there. doesn't particularly matter. So that is, once you get on to this, basically you can call this the startup script in quotes, and then this is the close down script. Keep in mind, a lot of people don't close FileMaker files correctly. This one, you should assume, will always run because it must. This one here, they could force close or lose the internet connection, and it never really goes through a formal close down process. That's why using FileMaker Server is so important because it allows you to make sure that if someone does a ugly disconnect, that they uh, that they don't damage the database. The, the FileMaker Server expects people to be disconnected because they go out of internet range or cell phone dies or their laptop battery dies. They don't go through proper shutdown, and so the FileMaker Server sees a client just arbitrarily quit, it gracefully massages whatever they're doing and gracefully removes them from the server, uh, right? So that's why we have backups so we use FileMaker Server. Um, very, very important. But keep in mind that if you have a process that depends upon on startup script running, that will always run. But I would say half, 60, maybe 70% on a good day of your users will run the last window close script. So if you have like essential critical like like we're going to process your billing in hours based upon a script that runs right here <laughs> some people are going to get paid at the end of the month because they they habitually just close their lid on their laptop and walk off and so they don't go through a proper shutdown process with FileMaker. and then when they come back they said the connection's lost it can't reestablish it because it's been a day or two over the weekend and they have to reconnect so they could run the startup script a couple times for every once they close it all right, so these are file-based script activation triggers, right? Sometimes you hear me refer to these as landmines, like, you know, no one wants to be in a landmine, but I have a military background, and so stepping on something that explodes is bad. If you step on a script trigger by accident, sometimes I'll call that a landmine. You stepped on a by accident, you didn't, you didn't know it was there, and off a script goes corkscrewing doing something you didn't know, especially if you didn't build the solution or you built it years ago and people used it. it was so great no one ever bothered to call you and then you come back years later and you're like oh i stepped on this it fired right so hopefully it does that very uh, gracefully so that is a file activation then you can have a layout activation so if we go to layouts layout setup i believe that's in this area i'm, I'm winging this all there we go layout setup script triggers so this the name of the layout the table occurrence it's attached to some other miscellaneous things Views, printing, these are the margins, like when you get into like really tight margins. I try not to do anything with that. If I can help it, I like the I like the printers. I like to print generic, generic eight and a half by eleven if you're in the United States or eleven by seventeen or and if you're in Europe, it's an A4, A5, or whatever it is. So it's it's applied to the overall layout on record load. When a record is loaded, when is a record loaded? When you flip the little 
Rolodex thing. If you have a script, if you're on a layout and this is activated, not only can your users trip the script triggers, but your scripts that are running, other scripts, can step on the trigger and activate it too. So you have inadvertent detonation, maybe. Maybe you plan for that. And you're like, well, what if I have a script that that it goes to like 10 records in a loop and it's doing things in every record, then, then that script would be interrupted as it loads to fire up this other script. You're like, oh, well, that'll be really slow because I have to do this looping thing a thousand times, okay? Hot tip, everyone ready for the hot tip? Here we go, hot tip. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I don't know if I do a beep. Um, let me just, I'm just gonna put a beep in here. All right, so what I got, I have a script right here and it's, I'm gonna call the script a for all lack of a uh, a thing we're just going to call it beep off there we go beep off mary margaret millick's gonna get mad at me i'm trying to keep it g-rated for everyone here there's the beep save all scripts so what we're going to do is we're going to say on layout mode right layout mode set let script step jump to this by the way you can jump to this window here if you're in layout mode by pressing the little pencil thing right here right pencil thing bammo you're there script triggers there on record load beep off okay so now browse mode command shift b i'm going fast some of you command left hand program if you're right-handed right hand goes on the mouse left hand goes on the keyboard around the control space key on the left so you can do keyboard shortcuts it'll help your development time much faster so i'm on a record i was only on a record i'm gonna hit the next record oh. i created a new record but it had to kind of load the new record okay new record new record New record, new record, new record. Now, if I go backwards, now I go to find mode and I go to browse mode, what is FileMaker going to do? Technically, it has to load the record to show it to you. Ooh, from find to browse mode. What about layout the browse mode? It's not such an important one, but it'd be interesting. Probably will. One, two, three. Yep, it did it. So, so you're like, well, if I write a script that loops through this, it's going to go, blah, 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 blah. and it's not only is it doing something, maybe it's just doing nothing important, but it's still running the script, which means that your whole loop is going to slow down if you have a lot of records. So here's your hot tip. Say this right here. If I go back to layout mode, and I was teaching my juniors this the other day, um, Taylor, if Taylor's there, she was hopefully remembering this. Say this is a contacts database CRM and it's a data <laughs> entry screen. It's a real, it's a real squirrely, that's not a high quality database, okay? Um, I could even program the button right here, double click it, perform a script and beep off. There we go, okay, great. Browse mode, beep, 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 moving forward, great. Now, what, what we have is I, I'm going to write a script that's going to loop and it's going to fire this off all the time and that would suck. Layout mode, I'm going to go to uh, layouts and I'm going to say duplicate the layout. And then I'm going to say layout setup. And I'm going to call it, what I do is I call these, some people call them developer layouts. I call them maintenance layouts because they're designed for maintenance or maintenance process. Some people call them a developer layout. Um, but I think other, I mean, an end user might step on this by accident. Um, and so it's really a more of a maintenance thing for them. So you hit OK, maintenance. Then I'm going to say, I, well, I say OK. OK, now I'm on. So I've got, I've got maintenance, and I have the regular end user one. Then, of course, you can see where I'm going with this. You say, uh, set up the triggers. You turn the trigger off. So what I do on a maintenance layouts, if I go, in fact, if I go manage layouts over here, OK. Ha, <laughs> okay, this is interesting. I'm gonna go to browse, I'm gonna go to layout, uh, and I'm gonna say manage layouts. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit on this. What you have that looks like a little laser pointer, if you're a cat, you love those, or it's a sparkler or an explosion going off or something, little red thing, that's a trigger. It indicates that there's a trigger with that layout. On this layout, there's no trigger. So if I have a script that needs to do like developer maintenance -y kind of stuff, I have it jump to maybe a nearly identical looking layout. I have it do what it needs to do, then jump back so it doesn't trip all the landmines in flight, right? It's like literally like you're, a, you're, like, you're like out in, uh, you know, in the battlefield and you're in a truck 
and you don't care at all. You're just driving down the road as fast as you can because maybe the landmines are just little poppy things. They don't hurt anyone, right? You don't care. You're driving down the road as fast as possible, and they're all blowing up behind you, okay? You want to avoid that. So what you do is we're directing you over to a different parallel road that doesn't have any landmines on it. You do your work on there, then you come back, you leave. Because a user has benefit. Those the Well, I'm saying landmines in a kind of potentially negative context. They're super beneficial. They're really awesome, but you don't want them armed all the time. There's no button in the system that says, disarm all the script triggers. It doesn't, I mean, there is kind of a the debugger, different conversation, but there's really no like universe, like a script step says, arm or disarm all the landmines. Wouldn't that be cool? Can reference a roll. Hey, I saw a Rolodex yesterday in use by my mechanic. Well, he used to be my mechanic for the helicopter, and he legit, he's 10 years older than I am, and he had a legit Rolodex. He says he doesn't use it anymore, but he's afraid there's important information in it, so he doesn't want to throw it away. I told him he's going to throw away a Rolodex, bring it to me. For those of you who don't know what a Rolodex, it's a little round flippy thing with <laughs> records in it. So it's like a little round, it's a, it's a physical database. It's close to oh, a real no. physical database. But Mark, you've, I don't think you've ever seen one. I thought that you were talking about the really expensive watches and I was so confused. <laughs> dude, dude. So that's what happens. So it's a, the problem, and that's been one of the things that we struggle with in training is trying to explain database concepts to people who never have physically seen a database before, right? They, they, their idea is just typing random, their database is their computer. They type random files into it. When they want to find something, they do it, tell the operating system to do a search on their hard drive. And some people can be very successful with that, right? So they have a searchable data repository, right? So anyway, someone else was typing stuff into Discord, like the Discord system over here, typing into Discord, like every record was in Discord. It was, a, it was a professor talking about this because they were having a real hard time teaching STEM, basic STEM concepts, science, technology, engineering, math, right? Uh, to people who haven't been exposed to it. They're over here in FileMaker training and, and their idea was to post, uh, you know, like here's a record of information. I got this information, it's a contact for someone. Uh, Steve Jobs is, oh no, no, he's not, no. Uh, Tim Cook, CEO of Claire, or File Apple. And there, there's his record. Oh, here's Richard's phone number and phone number. Oh, here's Margaret's number and phone number. And they just put it into Discord. And, and so then when they want to find something, they come up here and search and say, find me. I'm going to copy that so I can find it. Go find this thing. And it, it like targets it. And now it says no results. But it would target that and bring that up and show it to you. And you're like, Ew. that's what 20-year-olds do these days. Okay. We got yes. a question. We have a question. Uh -huh. So how do we set a global value to only look at and switch maintenance layout if we have to set that bit? That. So we set the global, the global value will cause it to go. I mean, where's the trigger at? So, I mean, I guess we've covered, well, let me back up here. So we spent time on on record load was a big one. Let me just go back over here real quick. Flint is going to ask a, is pr provide more um, amplification of his question for me. Okay. Awesome. Uh, triggers. On record load, on record commit, from the from a beginner standpoint today, for all of the beginners, not the advanced people, I'm simply going to say that on record commit means on record save. If you're using it on a hosted solution, that means that the that the, the client is saving the data across the internet to the server. You probably don't see it happens. It happens automatically most of the time. So when that record is being saved to the server. If there's anything to save, if you're flipping records, are you changing the record? No. If you're not changing the record, is, is there anything to save? No. So only if you edit a record and then it saves it, then you would trip uh, the on record uh, commit. On record revert, I can assure you, I've never used that once ever. In fact, I don't know anyone has used it, right, that I'm aware of. Um, it has to do with when you do a bunch of stuff and then it wants to unwind, and then if it unwinds, what do you do? Um, the only reverts that we see we actively are using are uh, like the, uh, the transactions, the trans the new transactions in FileMaker 19.6. Those have a, they don't use the word rollback, they use the word revert, but revert or rollback, really cool, but not here. Layout keystroke, definitely use that. Le uh, that makes perfect sense. If, you're in, if this layout is active, 
like it's the active window and you type a key, it will, it will fire that trigger, okay? Now you can also apply that, that on keystroke to an object like a field. So it doesn't have to be on the whole layout. It could be on a specific field or five fields, or it could be on the whole layout, depending upon what your needs are, okay? On layout, enter, super easy. You come into a layout, okay? So coming into a layout, coming into a record, everyone, even a beginning developer person. Taylor, are you there? Does that make perfect sense to you? I'm gonna use Taylor as my- Yes, it does. My canary in the coal mine or parakeet in the coal mine. So she <laughs> falls over dead. I know I went too advanced, so. We got the follow-up from Flint. So we go into admin and not user. Is he using global to establish a level of security? Is that what he's trying to do? It's a little bit more of a, Flint, if, listen, if this goes back to every one of you here. I, so a lot of you ask me questions and sometimes my other staff answers the question. Sometimes I will email you back. If it's a longer question, sometimes I make a video about it. If I don't answer your question today, please ask, because I want to make sure that I, A, I covered all this material and B, that your questions are being answered. I care. Layout keystroke, layout enter, layout exit. So if you're leaving a layout, how dare you leave a layout? Are you authorized to leave the layout? Whatever, okay? Layout enter, layout exit, really easy. Layout size change. Dumb, okay, so we so understand this is super stupid on Mac and Windows, on desktop or laptop computers. That, so this would trigger every time you resize the window. You get down in the corner and you resize it. Not move it, resize it. But a resize is what happens when you're on a iPad and you change the orientation. Well, you're like, well, the size doesn't change. Well, technically, the length and, and the width auto-scaled and changed. The total area probably didn't change. It's probably the same surface area. Length times width equals the same on both. But they didn't say, did the surface area change? They said layout size. They're talking about length and height change. So either the length changes or the height changes, it fires that. So that is your, uh, so you set it up here in Pro because we do all our, all our programming, all our design and development. For Go, we do it in Pro. And so it has to be here. So we would use that for an iOS user for, I mean, you really want it to tri script a trigger if someone resizes the window. I guess I, I've never seen that on mode enter on entering browse mode on entering find mode, right? Like if someone enters find mode and you want to stop them or redirect them, like for example, Nick does a lot of stuff where he says, I'm going to, he does like a customized find screen. I don't do that. It's a lot of work, but Nick's different kind of guy, right? Um, and he would go, well, if you enter command F enter find mode, I want you to be on this other screen, which is tuned to just defined experience. And it's really beautiful. And you know, how he gets his French way going and everyone starts buttering up with him. He's so wonderful, right? So it's going to go to a find mode and it'll be beautiful. And it'll be pleasing to the eye, right? He says all that. Yeah. On mode enter allows you to intercept, not so much layout mode, no one cares about that but preview browse if you're switching between preview browse and uh find right uh mode exit mode enter mode exit view change view changes form view list view table view right here are the views right here form view list view table view it's the little things that hide up here right normally in a, an established database solution custom application these are set like we have a data entry screen that's a form view we don't normally turn into a list view. It's just kind of, as a developer, we set it. We expect our users not to be using crack and other hard drugs while they're using the solution. They would see no reason to change that. But if they did, <laughs> you have a trigger for that. So once again, that's one I've never used. I could see it kind of maybe being useful, maybe. On gesture tap, can you tap on the screen? Hello down there on the internet. Can I tap on you? Cannot tap on you. That is, as you can guess, for the iOS device, okay? But you set it up here. So you can just, you can detect two finger tap or a three finger tap or whatever it can detect. One tap, double taps. It's, it's, there's a list of four or five things it detects. It can't detect like paper, rock, scissors. It's not that sophisticated. Gesture tap on external command receive. That's more Go. So those, those are, some of these are like uh, iOS stuff, but you have to set them up here in Pro. So that is, so we did file triggers, 
we did layout triggers, then we have object triggers. The object triggers generally mirror the layout triggers, the object. So, so instead of having a layout keystroke, like if I come over here and I go to this layout and I say, we'll just, just turn one on here so we feel like I did something productive for you. Script trigger on layout keystroke, okay? And I say, select beep off, okay? I say, okay, I say, okay, I go to browse mode. So if I type, if I'm over here, I'm not in a field, mouse click, nope, nothing. Oh, I hit G. Ah, now still throwing an error. So, okay, so what how about we only beep? Okay, let's try this. Oh, get up there, shift, there we go. Now, what I'm gonna say, if, yeah, if get, oh, I don't want to, you know, yeah, I don't want to try to get that deep in it. We don't have that much time, but you could get the keystroke that you're shooting, right? Have you, anyone care about that? You want to try that? Yeah. I mean, I could try. Problem is I'm winging this. If, and I want to go to function, it's like trigger, get, trigger, trigger keystroke, get trigger keystroke. Okay. I'm assuming what I can do, what I can do is I can just say, Let's try this. Let's just see what that does. I'm going to comment these out for a moment, and I'm going to have it show a custom dialog. Just once again, I told my staff I hate custom dialogs. Hey, you typed this. And then over here, I could specify get trigger keystroke. See what happens, what comes back, if that works. Um, I'm going to say, OK, save it. Ready to go. Come over here. A. Ah. I hit the letter, you can't see my finger, but I'm gonna tell you, now I'm gonna hit, oh, then it throws the air. Okay, no bueno. So let's do this. So what I'm gonna do is now that we know that's working, I'm gonna say if the trigger keystroke is equal to A, then I'm going, and I'm gonna turn these back on, then I'm going to beep, but before, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it to, I want it to um, suppress, uh, Boy. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm actually building this demo in real time. So if, if we hit a, a, B, a, it'll beep, right? What I'm trying to do is think about killing that error message that we get. So let me just do this for now. I will do the next one. So here, I'm going to type B. I type B. Uh, now I'm going to click into a field and type B. Once again, it's a layout wide keystroke. It doesn't care if I'm in or out of the field. So I'm going to hit B right now. B. B, B, B. Now I'm going to hit A. One, two, three, A. Ah, you hear that. Ed Burkle says set air capture on. It's actually, that won't do it because it suppresses the air while this is running. So this gets back to the next thing I need to brief everyone on. So all the script triggers, um, There's a, this PDF is great. It'll, you can follow up with this. Working with script triggers, blah, 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 blah. I want to get to a chart. So this is a list of all the script triggers. You'll recognize most of all these. We talked about these. Now, remember we said on object, uh, key, on layout keystroke, things like that, you have layout keystroke. Well, eventually, you have object keystroke. Um, and this is actually the order in which they execute right here, which is really great. Sometimes it's hard finding these things. There's the two things you have to essentially know is potentially is the order they will detonate. So if, if, if you trip, like you're walking down the road and you step on two landmines at the same time, that would suck for you. In the world of FileMaker, no one's going to die, but what, what you need to know is which one will fire first. And so this list tells you which one fires first. Not only that, this is an important concept right here. Ed and everyone else, follow, follow what I'm saying. The trigger, the, the FileMaker triggered event can occur before or at it's not like before or after it happens, like before it happens, it's going to go backwards in time and stop you from doing it. Not like that. When I type a letter A over here, follow this. If I type a letter um, A right here, if I go over here to see if it's a before or after event, you'll understand what I'm saying. It says on layout keystroke happens before. So what happens is, is that FileMaker sees a letter A coming. It goes, before I actually push that A to wherever that spot is, wherever the mouse is at or wherever the cursor is at, it's going to run this script. Because it happens before, we have the option of aborting it and stopping it. And so by default, as you can tell, I'm typing A, it's still going. So it's by default letting it go through. 
Okay, you follow what I'm saying? So if you want to tell it to stop the abort, say that we really don't want the letter A, right? We don't want the letter A in here. We go to script workspace. I'm going to come over here to scripts. I'm going to say, if it sees a letter A, Oh, there we go. Can you folks see that? That is so awesome. Welcome to Monkey Bread software. I love Monkey Bread, right? Welcome to Christian Schmidt's Monkey Bread. Awesome stuff. So if it does letter A, it's going to beep. Cool. Now, this right over here is comment out. There's no dialogue. So it just ends. And then it, then it goes back to the normal behavior. But if we tell FileMaker, eh, we really don't want it to... If it's an A, I could tell it to, please stop. Now, you would say, oh, that's a halt. Well, the script ends, but remember the A going in there is part of FileMaker's native behavior. No script is running, right? Halt script doesn't work. What you can do is you can say, you can give it an exit script, which you're like, well, that's like a halt script. Exit script right here, and you pass it a result of, I believe it's zero, we'll try this. I think that's fail, okay? It's either zero, one is fail. It's one of those deals where this is a counterintuitive thing in the world of FileMaker, and it's because they Claire's built this after the platform was 20 years old and millions of people were using it. So they couldn't retroactively break things, which why sometimes we call organic development cycle. Claris and a lot of us, like starting point is built organically. We've been working on it for 10 years. We kind of go back and clean things up, but it's, you know, if you knew what, you, if I knew right now, I knew I'm 52. If I knew what I knew at 52 and I was 20, wouldn't I be probably somewhere else? Better, bigger, faster, whatever, right? So I'd have my own Air Force of 50 helicopters, right, or something, whatever. I probably wouldn't be here. And as much as I love you, I'm sure I'd find something to do, right? So, but we all can't go back in time. So that's the problem with why sometimes you're going to see this little counterintuitive. So I'm going to pass a script result zero. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come over here. So I'm going to click in here. B, 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 B. Oh, you know what the problem is? It's outside. So it. So if I have an A, ah, listen to this. But nothing's going on screen. So it's forking in here. Then this, because it's zero, tells that, that as it receives it back on the other side. Remember, it was triggered on the layout right here. If we go to layout, I hit the little button. This starts it right here. It goes to the script down here. You can't see it. It goes to the script down here. And then it, if, it, if it says exit script with a zero, it comes back up here and says, hey, whatever you're doing, don't do it. It's right here. It says, if the script returns true, the original event proceeds normally. Otherwise, the event is canceled. That is a really poorly written sentence. And this is what I was talking about with organic growth. So normally in the world, a one is a one, positive is, an, is a positive, zero is negative. And normally in the world of FileMaker, most programming, a blank or no value is considered to be a zero. It's nothing, right? Now you could say, it's no, I get a mathematician here that's going to argue with me that null, null is a vacuum of space. It's not really zero. Zero is actually a number, right? Um, we're getting into semantics. If those of you who have liberal arts majors, just don't worry about it. Trust me on this, that most of the time, in most places, a, a blank space is a zero. In this one case, it's not. Because remember before, we weren't passing anything back. So if I go, if I say, okay, I come over here, and I, so that we know will stop it. So let's move it up here. So it's going to beep. If it's an A, it'll beep, and then it will stop it. Everything else gets through. So you can block certain characters, right, on the whole layout. You can also apply this exact same thing to a field. If you go in the field and you say, right click it and you say script trigger, that's your layout or that correction, that's your object level trigger. Right here, object keystroke. Same, same, same exact as a layout, except it only applies over that little box. I'm not going to explain to you how that one works because it works the same way, but it only activates over that little spot. So I'm going to come over here. I'm gonna, so the layout one activates over the whole. The whole area, all this area right here, and that area went in browse mode, it activates. So here we are. So I'm going to, now I should affect the A, right? Save it, come back over here. A, B, A, it stops it. The zero stops it. With B, there's nothing there that allows it through. 
So I'm going to duplicate right here. I'm going to come down to just to be very explicit. If you were doing this, you'd want to just be very clear or you'd say something like true, right? Right. Save true or maybe false. But this tells it to continue on if it's anything else. Save. Come back over here. BBB makes perfect sense. A. Beep, 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 nothing happening. So this is the idea of pre and post triggers. Not all the triggers are pre-triggers. The ones that are pre-triggers, you can intercept and stop using this technique or whatever criteria. You don't have to have it based on a keystroke. You could say, hey, this guy, Fred, the user's name is Fred Smith. So you come over here, you could say, or by the username, or you can see, oh, it's my computer is currently called Christian Olson. So <laughs> this was another demo we were running. So we could say if the user get, uh, is it user? Is it current user? User, let's try the username. If the username is Christian Olson, assuming I can spell that correctly. Christian Olson, there we go. If the username is Christian Olson, then two beeps, and then uh, nothing happens. Otherwise, uh, it's going to let the character go through. So this would be so so interesting, right? What happens? I'm going to create. I'm going to go to a new record. Okay, nothing happened there. Type. See, because I'm Christian Olson. Now, if I come over here to over here and I change it back to Richard Carlton and I start typing A, now it works. Ah. Pretty cool, eh? Here's the rub with it: is that is that if you don't put anything down here it assumes it's true so if you don't if you don't have this down here, i'm going to save this and close it it was a very explicit but if you don't have anything down there it's no you're not passing a value back so it should be a fail is my point right about the thing it should kind of by default a blank because uh, basically at the end of the script whether everyone understands this or not at the end of the script it's an exit script that is the invisible command that runs the invisible command is the exit script because in invisible command there's nothing in we know it's an exit script not a halt because halt stops everything at the very end of the script filemaker automatically performs an exit script with no result and if there's no result then that is basically zero or null. It should tell it to fail, but it but it works by default. It's one of those little gotcha things on the FileMaker certification test of all things. This is the beginning, the basics. This is step one of understanding script triggers. So script triggers can be applied to the file, to the layout, to an object. In the PDF I have provided to you, it's a bunch of different spots of help out of the FileMaker, out of the Claris documentation, the FileMaker platform, is that you have the order in which they will execute if you step on one more than one at a time for example you have the file open you have it on trig on layout enter and on record load right so you have so the first one is on file first open then on layout enter then it would trigger that one and then if you happen to be on a layout where it's set to on record load it would so it'd go bam 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 so you could fire three scripts sequentially now, I wouldn't try to get too crazy with that. However, let me show you an example, a very practical application. Once again, it's not something I use that often. I'm going to show you my radio control airplane database. So it's called Plane Commander. Okay, here's Plane Commander. Okay, this is awesome. So don't pay attention to anything on here. There is an on record load in here. I fly. I'm, so people say, Richard, why don't you have electric car? Because I know what electric systems can do they suck okay so trust me i've been there especially with high high energy applications lithium batteries can't perform very well i was a professional competitive real control aircraft if i go to yak yak this i say yak in here not that one where's the really good one there's a smaller one that's a big one i won with this one that's this award uh, uh, first place so this here is an electric plane okay this screen right here doesn't talk about any gas or fuel, things like that, because it's an electric plane. If I have electric helicopter, the information is very similar. It's different. I have four different, nearly identical layouts. So on record load, it determines if it's an electric fixed wing aircraft, a fuel aircraft. See that shift right there? I changed it. It shifted. Started talking about fuel tank, type of fuel, right? Or it's a helicopter. Slightly different information. Talk about rotor blade diameters, things, RPM, things like that. So 
Here's an application where on record load can direct you to the correct layout. The layouts are nearly identical. You'd never see them. I had a little bit of a pixel shift there. Should be fixed. See a little bit of a shift? That one, I don't think it was much of a shift. Those two are pretty close. This, the bottom is changing. So that's a practical application of controlling your environment, directing people to the correct layout. And it's so subtle because they only see it when they flip records. You never see it like that. So as I flip record, so I go back over here, there's helicopter. Flip, 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 flip. I don't have most of these aircraft anymore. I only have the really good ones. So when you get the helicopter, it displays different. Some of these I design, some I fly competitively, some of them are great failures. So you get the helicopter, it shows different information. It displays a different layout. Pretty cool. So that's a practical application of just that one trigger. Well, that's it for today. Tomorrow is going to be when marketing people call for tech support. We're going to get the hotline phone out. We're going to simulate a call. Hello, marketing department. The internet's full. We want better internet, right? We're going to be, uh, we'll be looking a little bit at the newer version of starting point. It's a lot of bug fixes, but mostly the big thing that we forgot to add last time we're putting it in because Leland goes, hey, Carlton, did you ever put the latency thingy in there, right? So we're going to talk about the latency thingy with the internet being full. So very technically sophisticated tomorrow. So that's it. Any final questions? No, I think we're good. You guys have, you guys, gals, I mean, everyone lovingly, we love you here. Welcome to the world of filing. See you tomorrow. Biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. 